OMG, you won't believe who I just saw. What? Who? Okay, wait. Maybe I shouldn't tell you. No. You have to tell me now. Fine. I saw Ian downtown. What? Yep. I'm sorry. I made it sound exciting, but it probably sucks for you to know that, doesn't it? Actually? Surprisingly, no. I think it's been enough time in therapy and my focus on work that I can handle it. Wow! I'm so proud of you. Because if I had just been told that my ex who left me at the altar the day of our wedding was in town, I'd explode. Or hurt him. Honestly, I can't say that I wasn't considering hurting Ian when I saw him. But I kept my distance and kept myself hidden. Thank you for not engaging. That would have made me an accessory to a crime and wouldn't be good for business. That's exactly what I thought, which is why I didn't go up to him. Although, not saying he doesn't deserve it. Yeah, I can agree with you there. I might have made my peace with what happened, but that doesn't mean it wasn't a complete prick move on his part. Honestly, I don't know why he's showing his face in the city again. Yeah, it's a small city, and the whole debacle kind of went viral on the internet. Which is why I needed such extensive therapy. Well, at least you can more than afford it now. Yeah, just let me know when you need therapy, and I'd be happy to front the bill. Let's just say that if I have to see Ian's stupid mug again, I won't be able to control my rage. And after all is said and done, I should need therapy then. Maybe I should hire you to be my bodyguard. <laughs> Wait, do you need a bodyguard now? Is that a thing? No, I don't need one. But my advisors did recommend it at one point. Wow, so business is booming for the foreseeable future? Amazing! I wouldn't expect anything less. Yes, it looks like it. We're hiring a ton of new staff. You know, there's always room for you if you ever want. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the offer, but I think I'll stay at the school for now. You really are the best teacher for those kids. I am, aren't I? Are you sure that you're okay? That Ian is in the city? Yes. I think I'll be fine. Thank you for checking in on me. I couldn't ask for a better best friend. You know, I'm always here for you. If you need to talk or anything, just let me know. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh my god, oh my god. You'll never guess what happened. Like, it's so insanely crazy that if I didn't experience it myself, I wouldn't believe it. What? What happened? I ran into Ian and I kind of expected to. I mean, my company operates from a downtown office. I tried to avoid him, but he saw me right away and came up to me. He literally came up and talked to me. The audacity of that man. I mean, he's acting like he didn't leave me at the altar three years ago. I can't believe it. I can't believe he thinks he can even speak to you, let alone go up to you in public. What did he even talk about? Did he at least apologize for what happened? No, it's even worse than that. He didn't make fun of you or anything like that. Great, because if he did, I swear I'm going to hunt him down. No, it's even worse. He tried to ask me out. What? You can't be serious. He seriously doesn't think that you're going to go on a date with him, does he? I know. I nearly keeled over when he asked me. I thought it was some sick joke, but he was serious. What did he say? You told him no, obviously. I told him I'd think about it. It was the only way I could get him to leave me alone. I was on my way to a meeting with some of my lawyers. I seriously hope that that meeting also involved you taking out a restraining order against him. You know, that would have been a good idea, but I'm afraid it gets even worse. Oh no. I ended up giving him my number. What? I know. 
I think some weird, polite social contract overtook my brain or something. I would never have given him my number with a sane mind. But we were in public and he was not leaving me alone. I could think of to get him off my back. God, how is it that he's been in the city for what, a day? And he's managed to worm himself back into your life like a virus or something? <laughs> I know, it's insane. I really thought that when he left the city, I'd never have to see his ugly face again. But here we are. What are you going to do if he texts you? You don't think he's actually going to text you, right? At this point, I have no idea what to expect. I'm just so sick and tired of him. He thinks he can get through life so easily, even though he's not a good person. I hate that it took me so long to see him for what he was. But he's just that bad a person. The worst kind of person. He didn't even give you a reason why he left you. He just left. And then you had to spend the next year paying off your wedding bill. Yeah, exactly. That's why I started my business in the first place, to make a little extra money to help me pay off the massive wedding bill. It's literally the worst. And now he has my number. There has to be something that we can do. Do you know why he's in the city? No. But maybe if I find out, I can make sure that he leaves the city and never comes back. Sounds like a promising plan. But how are you going to find out why he's in the city? I think the only way I can is... Don't you dare say it. I think I have to go on that date with him. Oh my god, there has to be another way. Can't you just text him? You know how he is. If he doesn't see it benefiting him, he's not going to say anything. He is such a sleaze. Yeah, the biggest one. So what? You're going to go on this dinner date with him and figure out what he's doing in the city? Yeah, I guess it seems like it's the only thing I can do right now. I would not want to be in your position. <laughs> Thanks. Even if you did find out what he's in the city for, can you even guarantee that you can stop it from happening? If there's one thing I can count on for that man, it's that he's obsessed with money. Not only is he cheap enough to mark all the wedding expenses under my name, but he is obsessed with pursuing more money. I mean, he would talk about climbing the ladder at his corporate job all the time. And I guess the reason why he skipped out of town in the first place was that he lost out on a promotion or something. So my guess is he's in town because he has a job interview or something somewhere. Some other place where he can climb the corporate ladder. So I'm guessing that means that you, being one of the most influential business people in the city, can probably put in a word about him being hired. Exactly. You know, I could really use you as my advisor at my company. <laughs> Quit trying to hire me. Fine, fine. I'll stop trying to recruit you. I know how happy you are teaching at the school. Exactly. But what I can do is I can advise you on a plan. Take Ian down. Perfect. So I guess whenever he texts me, I'll have to stomach it and say yes to dinner. I think that's the only way I can find out what he's doing in the city. Unfortunately, knowing Ian, I think you're right. Of course, you only need to stay for as long as it takes you to figure out what he's doing. Then you can make up some emergency and you can leave. This is why I love you. I am very resourceful, aren't I? Now we just need him to text you. Unfortunately, it won't be long until he does. But at least the sooner we get this done, the better. And then you can rule over the city as you are meant to. I don't rule over the city. <laughs> All the newspapers beg to differ. You don't think he's read any of the newspapers, do you? Like, he doesn't know what I've been doing since he left me at the altar all those years ago. I don't think that man has read anything that would lead to money in years. Honestly, I think you're safe. Besides, if he caught wind of your name or whatever, I don't think he would believe it's you. He is stupid like that. Exactly.
It was really great running into you, Lila. Who is this? Don't be coy. You know exactly who this is. Oh, yep. Anyways, have you thought about my amazing offer? Amazing offer? And what would that be? Playing hard to get. I respect that. I like a girl who didn't give up the game. Are you going to ask me? Fine. Don't get your undies in a twist. Do you want to go out to dinner tonight? My treat, obviously. I can easily afford it. Really? Yes, really. I'm coming into my own now. What does that mean? Is that why you're in the city? I'll tell you all about it at dinner. Right. I guess I have to say yes then. That's right, sweet cheeks. Please, no pet names. Oh, come on. You're not still mad about what happened all those years ago? You're talking about it like you insulted a pet of mine. Not leaving me at the altar in front of our friends and family. That was all in the past. I'm a changed man now, I swear. You know, I'm having a really hard time believing that. Please, you really need to take a chill pill. It wasn't that bad. Maybe for you, you got to leave. You didn't have to explain to all our friends and family that you weren't going to show and that there was no wedding happening. You've always been better at public speaking anyways. You can't be serious. I don't think telling our friends and family, most of whom came a long way, that there wasn't a wedding anymore because you left counts as public speaking semantics. It couldn't have been that bad. Besides, wouldn't you rather me leave right then and there rather than us being in a marriage I didn't really want to be a part of? Is that why you left me? Because I wouldn't know. You didn't tell me anything. You just upped and left. It wasn't until 10 minutes before we were supposed to walk down the aisle that you bailed out of the wedding. No one knew where you were. And for so long, I was scared that something happened. But then when we saw that your vehicle was gone and it looked like you had no intention of coming back, that's when we called off the wedding. You didn't have the decency to speak with me about why you were doing what you were doing. You didn't even send a text. Not during our wedding. And especially not after. Then when I went to find you, I found out you had moved away. How do you think that made me feel? As I said before, I was a different man then. I promise I'm not like that anymore. I won't run off. At least I won't run off from our one date. Honestly, you kind of owe me at least one day. If not for me, then for our history. Actually, I don't owe you anything. You didn't have the decency to speak to me, even though you owed it to me. Then why should I give you that, right? So why don't we skip the dinner and you just tell me why you're in the city? Why would I do that? If you're so curious, I guess you have to come to dinner with me. Why do we even want that to happen there with me? You didn't want to marry me three years ago, and now you suddenly want to go out and get dinner? What's your plan here? What's the end game? Can't old friends just go out together and grab a bite to eat? God, it's not like you want me to get down on one knee right now before I even take you out to eat dinner. Honestly, maybe it's because of that kind of attitude that I left you at the altar. Excuse me? You heard me. Maybe it wasn't all because of me that we didn't get married. Maybe it's because you always had to be the better one of the two of us. I can never be the one shining in the spotlight. It always had to be you. You had to have the best job. You had to have the best friends. You had to have the best everything. It was like everything was a competition for you. Whoa. Are you talking about me or talking about you? Because as you just perfectly described, what a relationship was like with you. Also, how can it be my fault that you left me at the altar? Well, maybe if you loved me better, I would have stayed. Loved you better? How could I have loved you better? I loved you with everything I had. I even saw past your obvious red flags to marry you. Red flags? 
What red flags? I'm a catch. Any woman would be lucky to have me as her husband. Honestly, I don't see it as luck anymore. More as punishment. See, you say things like that and you expect me to stay and marry you? Honestly, it's a miracle that I hadn't left you before we got to the wedding venue. Oh, please. I never said anything like this before. I didn't care enough to. I was just happy settling for a man like you. Oh, you were settling? How do you think that makes me feel? Do you want me to pay attention to your feelings while you completely disregard my own? Make that make sense. How is that equality? Why are we even talking about this? This doesn't matter. Especially if you insist on getting dinner for the sake of getting dinner. If you have nothing else planned, then I guess I will see you at the restaurant. What? I thought you wanted to skip the dinner and just find out information about me. You know, you treat me like a real bad guy. I'm not that bad of a guy. Again. You left me at the altar. Then you cut off all contact with me afterward. You didn't answer a single text phone call or email that I sent you. You didn't even have the guts to tell me that you were moving away. I had to find out from your old roommate. You embarrassed me in front of all of our friends and family, and you still haven't let me know why you left me. Why do you need to know that? Oh, that's right. You're a control freak. God. For someone trying to get a date with me, you're doing a really bad job at it. What kind of sane woman would want to go on a date with you after being insulted time and time again? I'm not insulting you. You're just taking everything I'm saying and twisting it the wrong way. There's literally no other way to hear and understand your words. You're literally gaslighting me. Oh wow, that's a fancy word. Do you want to go out to dinner or not? Because there are a million other women in this city who have killed to go on a date with me. God, your ego has gotten no better, has it? So dinner or not? Because if you say no, then I'll just move on. Do you really want to sit down and have dinner with me? Yes. Why else would I have stuck through this entire conversation? Fine. I'll go to dinner with you. Great. I'll pick you up at 7. How about we just meet at the restaurant? Why? Don't want me to know where you live? Something like that. OMG. I just got home from dinner. I have a seriously insane update. <gasps> oh yeah? What's that? I know why Ian is in the city and you're going to laugh. Oh my gosh, is it embarrassing? I'm ready to have a good laugh. It will be embarrassing, especially when he finds out what I know. What? What do you know? Ian is in the city for a job interview. Okay. A job interview with my company. Get out of here. You can't be serious. I am. This couldn't have worked out better. After he told me why he was in the city at the end of dinner, Mind you, I left and I phoned my hiring manager to see if his name was on the list. And it was. His interview's tomorrow. Oh my god. And he doesn't know that you own the company? Oh, I can assure you, he doesn't have a clue. You should have heard the way he was talking to me at dinner. He was treating me exactly how he treated me in our relationship. All those years ago. Like I was insignificant and not worth as much as him. He even tried to belittle me and say that he was going to be landing this prestigious job with some prestigious company. You can't be serious. The audacity of that man never fails to surprise me. I can't believe he would say those kinds of things about you to your face. I mean, I know he doesn't know who you are, or more accurately, who you've become over the years. Well, that's just going to make tomorrow even better, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. What are you planning on doing? How can I be a part of it? I think it would be great if you came in tomorrow and posed as my secretary. I mean, that is, if you wanted to get front row seats to this revenge story. Are you kidding me? I want to buy the backstage pass to this revenge story. You can count me in. 
I'll call in sick for work and I'll head to your office in my best secretary clothes. Do you think he'll recognize me? I mean, he's such a prick that I wouldn't put it past him, that he doesn't even register who I am. He will, once I'm through with him. God, this is going to be so good. So good. You know, I know that you left in a big hurry last night after dinner because you apparently couldn't stand to be in the same room with me longer than needed. But I tell you what, you're really going to regret that, especially after what I tell you. What? I'm so happy that I left you at the altar and embarrassed you. Otherwise, I would have never gotten this amazing new job at this rich company. You mean my rich company? Huh? You really didn't recognize my best friend being my secretary? Or the fact that my hiring manager never passed a glance toward you? Or the fact that the CEO was clearly speaking through a voice modulator while you FaceTimed them with your camera off? What? I knew something was weird about that interview. Oh, but you kept going on and on and you were lying through your teeth. I had someone on standby, a company, a white hat hacker, who went through all of your history and then fact checked the interview. Live. Live? Oh, didn't I tell you that your interview was broadcasted live to our entire company along with the live fact checking? Apparently, the only thing you told the truth about was your name. How freaking dare you? I thought that damn secretary looked familiar. How could you do that to me? Don't you have an ounce of respect for me or for yourself? I can't believe you would pull something like this. I mean, after I paid for your dinner last night, you have no class. Oh, I have no class? Says the man that left his fiance at the altar without so much of a word of an explanation? Not only that, but you also left me with an enormous wedding bill. Well, that can't be my fault. I honestly thought I was going to marry you. But now, seeing the kind of person that you are, the kind who wants to embarrass people for fun, I'm glad that I didn't marry you. What? You were embarrassed? Oh, poor baby. Shut up! How could you string me along like this? I really hope that the flight wasn't too expensive. I know I said our company was going to compensate you for it, but after careful consideration, we figured that you were probably rich enough to pay for it. I mean, that's what you told me yesterday at dinner. You conniving little wench. Yeah, I'd make sure to go at least a couple of states over when hunting for your next job. The thing about being one of the most influential business people of the past year is that you have a lot of sway with most corporations. I mean, after seeing me in the Financial Times and Business Insider, most people are willing to listen to what I have to say. And I won't hesitate to tell them that you're flaky and unloyal and will probably leave the company within two years. No, you can't do that. I'll never be able to find a job. Oh, tough luck. But maybe if you had loved me better, you wouldn't have this problem. I mean, you have to see it from my angle. This is all your fault. Anyways, it was nice seeing you. And thanks for the dinner. You little... I sent out Ian's interview tape with a live fact-checking to companies all over the country. They spread like wildfire and were used to train hiring managers. It'll be a miracle if Ian can land anything other than retail. He did try to sue me for defamation, but when my very capable lawyers and I filed a counter lawsuit against him for leaving me with our wedding bill, he was pretty quick to backtrack. He asked for a ceasefire, but I wasn't so quick to forgive. Not that I needed the money, but seeing his face when he heard the overall price tag was pretty priceless.